Alrighty, we got a match between CC Blue Jays and Themen0613. This is for all the marbles in their league division. I believe that uh, Themen needs three wins to be the winner of their division, and CC Blue Jays needs four. So there's a lot on the line here. Um, looking at this kingdom, uh, this is clearly Procession Horse. Um, not, not a whole lot else to see here. Uh, if Procession's around, probably the first thing to check is if there's any cards that give horses. As a matter of fact, there is. In this case, it's Hostelry. And uh, it just tends to be the case that Procession plus Horse is an incredibly strong combination. Because horses, you know, they're normally just like a one-shot laboratory. But if you process them using the Procession effect, you both get the horse effect twice. So you get two laboratories. Um, plus it comes with a plus action. Plus you then get an extra four cost card because horse costs three. So you process the horse, then you get another procession, which you can then use to, for example, process another horse, get another procession. You play procession on procession and horse on horse. Now you've got like two more processions as a five cost card and it all goes out of control fast. Now on top of that, there's also necromancy here, which means processions don't really run out. Uh, you play procession on procession, you get a five cost, like say Lost City, your procession's in the trash. Now your necromancer can play the procession. And so this combination is just like utterly bonkers. I would expect like roughly turn, I don't know, like six, seven, eight around there. It just kicks off and then like you win the game in a turn. Uh, I would think that probably the open here, uh, there, there's a lot of possibilities here. I think on four or three, I'd be pretty tempted by Sinister Plot Workshop. Uh, again, most of the things you want here all cost four. Hostelry, Necromancer, Procession, Workshop can get you all those. Sinister Plot's just like added reliability. You might let it build up for a few turns and then pop it like turn seven or so to line up your big procession mega turn. Other option could be like workshop necromancer or even double workshop. Necromancer, I think, I actually like opening necromancer more than most because you can get in like an early zombie mason. And if you hit like an estate, you're real happy because you got an estate out of your deck and got a three cost card. Let's see what they did. Um, so Themen gets silver hostery. I don't understand that. Why would you... Buy a hostelry. So like, I was just talking about why hostelry is good, which is not that like the, the hostelry card is good. It's that hostelry gives you horses, which are really good at the procession. But the way you get those horses is when you buy hostelry, if you overpay, or I guess overpay is not quite the right word. If you have extra coins left over, you can discard them for horse. Well, if you buy a hostelry with exactly four coppers, you're getting exactly zero horses. So that card is doing absolutely nothing for you. It's also a village, and in general, opening with villages is a very bad idea. Just because villages are like, I mean, they're often good cards. You often want villages um, to play extra action cards. But there's just <laughs> no way that on the first two turns of the game, you've already got multiple terminal action cards in your deck that could possibly require you to get a village in the first place. So I don't really understand why you would want um, hostelry um, that early. Nonetheless, uh, CC Blue Jays does the same. Still very confused by this. Then they both get Market Square. Okay, I'm also confused by that. Why would you want Market Square? You don't need the plus buy yet, because like your, your decks are not hitting big numbers. The maximum your deck could possibly hit right now is six with a silver and four coppers. So you don't need the plus buy, because you can't afford to buy like two things of value. And they don't have, at this point anyway, any way to activate the like, gold gain effect. Not that I'm sure I even want golds in this game in the first place. Pretty sure I don't. Um, so yeah, the, the market square is just, again seems like a waste of a buy. I feel like they've basically done one thing in three turns, which is buy silver. Those other two action cards are doing nothing for them. Lost City's alright. Oh no, oh no, oh no. So I'm, I'm just realizing that CC Blue Jays has bought a gold. Don't buy gold, it's a bad idea. Gold is such an overrated card. New folks love gold. They're like, I've got six, gold costs six, I better buy a gold. And that is just, that's like a mistake like 85, 90% of the time. It's just almost always the case that there's some action card out there or something that's better than a gold. And, like, for example here, if you were just, like, it, it, for whatever reason, I was just like, I desperately want golds, which I don't. I would think that the, the good way here to get, like, unlimited golds would be, like, Market Square plus Procession or Market Square plus Necromancer as Zombie Mason or even Market Square Necromancer as Zombie Apprentice. There's plenty of ways to activate Market Square and just pick up free golds as many as you want. I don't know why I'd waste my buys on golds. Uh, yeah, I really dislike the gold buy. Um, also, the, honestly, the silvers. Like, even the silvers I don't think are very good here. Usually you, you buy silver if you're trying to hit a key, like, five, six dollar price point. Because silver just increases, like, the, the monetary value of, like, your average hand. None of the fives and sixes here look amazing to me. Like, Duster is fine. It's a lab. Lost City is fine. It's a lab. 
and it's also a village. We don't really need the village effect. But like the the key cards I want to play with here are all four costs, and so usually the reason you get silver in the early game is like, oh, the fives are much better than the fours. Silver will help me afford five cost cards. Here, that is not the case. So I'm not. I I, I imagine I'd probably get the zero silver the entire game of this kingdom. I think you just want like some workshops to gain the fours or slash buy the fours directly, and then that's like all your deck ever needs to do. Um, nonetheless, they have not done that. They buy more market squares, still very confused by this, I'm not sure what those market squares are for. Um, there are two cards in this kingdom that can activate market squares effect, which are Necromancer and Procession. Those two can trash things. And both of those piles are still at 10. So the, the value of these market squares is eluding me. I'm not sure why they each have two of them. Uh, we'll find out. CC Blue Jays continues on the path of buying golds. Um, I'm a little upset by that, but at this point, I imagine that there's very little chance that they're, they're aiming for the, the proper deck in the first place. Again, I think correct deck here is Procession Necromancer Hothery. Uh, it seems they have not identified this combination, so we're going to see them play Market Square Big Money, I guess? I'm not really sure what the, the game plan is here. Uh, <laughs> it's rarely about gold. It is very rarely about gold. Um, <laughs> so CC Blue Jays has eight, and buys a Royal Blacksmith. Ah, uh, it's okay. I mean, if you're not trashing any of your coppers, then Royal Blacksmith is going to be a little awkward because it's going to discard all those coppers, and so it's going to actually be drawing you very few cards. Not sure I would buy Royal Blacksmith there. Man, I'm not sure what I would do from their positions in the first place, because they're like, like... This basically just feels like straight up big money. Like, just big money. Market squares do not really add anything to a big money deck. And I'm, I'm not really sure there's a good way to, to play that. Uh, like, I, I think it's not too late. I think if you just, like, handed me, like, Themen's deck right now, or CC Blue Jay's deck, I'd probably just, like, buy a workshop and try to pivot back towards the, the procession hospital thing. It's not too late. I know it's not going to happen, but like theoretically it's possible. And with each gold buy, <laughs> we stray further and further from the light. Um, <laughs> pretty soon it's just going to be not possible. Um, I think they're, they're probably just playing straight up big money here, in which case it will be fine to just like, you know, green early. These decks are not likely to do multiple provinces. Or they're really not like building efficiently enough to want to wanna build that big. CC Blue Jays just buys a province. I guess that's fine. Will Themen follow suit? There's a lot of pretty cool cards, most of which are still at 10. Uh, there's even a nice project, which is also unbought by both players. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. Um, CG so top deck the estate and buy. A six or top deck of copper and buy a five. Hmm. With four provinces left, I think it would be reasonable to just top deck copper and buy duchy here. Like at this point, I think they're well into the greening phase. Okay, so Kimmy is asking, not sure what to do with proc. Honestly, like, you don't need to know exactly what to do with proc. If you just, like, put the right cards in your deck and you click them in some order, it, it just, like, it sets itself off, and then you get this really nice combination. Um, but more precisely, what's going on here is... So, the, the goal here is going to be to line up procession with horses. So you'll get the horses off of hostelry. For example, I would love to have a hand that was, like, workshop and, like, three or four coppers. And then I would just, like, workshop for a hostelry and then get, like, four horses. And then you procession all those horses and then you're getting more processions, and you procession the processions and procession the horses, and now your processions are turning into Lost City or whatever. And then they're in the trash, so now you can gain Necromancers, and the Necromancers can play even more processions to trash even more horses, and then you just get, like, like all the piles just empty incredibly fast, and then you, like, buy a duchy or something, and then probably. Um, I, you, know, you also could, like, throw Market Square or two into that deck, and then, like, every time you redraw the Market Square, it's going to activate again off the next um, procession procession play. Uh, and then you could get just like tons of gold to market square B plus buy, and that could also work. 
You could also process workshops to get more workshops and then get more possessions off of that. Just like all of these like little three, four cost cards are just going to like spin out of control incredibly fast if you play a bunch of them. I would just forget silvers and golds exist, forget lost cities around. I mean, I mean you, you get lost cities inadvertently because you have to gain five costs of something or others. Uh, and then you do a bunch of that, you're eventually going to have a really nice deck. <laughs> what do you open if you have three, four, four, three? Uh, I think I wouldn't open with the procession because it's likely to be a dud card. Um, you're gonna like have a hand of like procession, two coppers, like two estates, something be really sad. I think the plausible opens are like sinister plot workshop, necromancer workshop, or double workshop, something like that. Um, Sinister's plot in particular looks good if it's like a 4-3, as compared to a 3-4, because you'll get like one extra free draw out of it. Uh, yeah, Workshop seems like a key card. Um, and then probably in that second shuffle I'm adding a Procession. So as Themen, do you buy a province or do you buy a duchy? Unfortunately, I've, I've been a little bit too distracted talking about the Procession stuff to know the exact contents of the deck right now. Um, obviously seeing CC Blue Jay's hand, I don't think I'd buy the province, but, uh, Themen, you know, might have concluded it was rational to gamble. As it turns out, they don't. They buy the Duchy, which is like the safer long-term play. I don't get that either. Um... If you're asking me for an explanation, I cannot help you. <laughs> You'll have to consult Themen or Blue Jays after the game and figure out why they don't like drawing cards. Like, plot would be lovely right about now, where you risk having a dead turn and you can pop your plot to save it. It's a little unfortunate two Mandarins have been bought. Both by the same person? Yeah, Themen has two Mandarins. Um, I don't like that. Mandarin's just a terrible card. The best way to play with Mandarin is just to not get it ever. Uh, a few reasons. First is it, it's just like, it's even worse than gold. And, you know, coming from me, that's saying something, because my opinions on gold, I think, are, are no secret. But it's gold, but it's terminal, so it costs an action, and it makes you top deck a card. Um, well, there's, there's one exception I guess I'll get to in a second. <laughs> um, but... Um, one or two is already just like way worse than gold. Um, but then on top of that, it has this problem that it top decks all your treasures. And the, the worst place to have treasures is on the top of your deck, like 95% of the time, because you want to find your draw cards first to then draw to your treasures. And if you start the hand with just treasures, your turn just fizzles out. Now, the, the one exception is there's this like wonky combination with Mandarin and Capital, uh, where Capital is the card that like it gives you six coins and then gives you six debt. But the technical way capital works is it gives you six debt when it's leaving play. And so if you put capitals in play, you get six coins. Then you buy a Mandarin, top deck the capital. Then you don't ever actually have to take the six debt because it never leaves play. Um, and so there's like a, a silly like Mandarin capital combination to be aware of. And it's really strong if you see it. Um, but outside of that, you just you don't buy Mandarin. <laughs> It's like a loophole to a loophole. Because the problem is, capital can't say, like, plus six coins, plus six debt. <laughs> because then it would just be a pointless card. You get the debt, and you have to immediately pay the debt off before you actually bought anything, which make it, you know, useless. And so the way capital has to work by necessity is it has to, like, give you the six coins now, and then give you the debt at, like, the end of the turn after your buy phase. Because otherwise the rules of Dominion would say you had to pay off the debt first before you bought anything. And, um... The, the result of that is the little clause in capital that's like, you get the debt when you discard it. And so there's like silly loopholes around that, around the loophole where like Mandarin, for example, or Crypt are cards that can take the capital and like get it out of play before the discard portion and the cleanup phase. So you can circumvent the little debt thing. Anyways, a new kingdom. Uh, all right, got a lot going on here. I'm not totally sure what to do in the opening on the face of it. Uh, it definitely looks like you can build, because, I mean, Amulet can trash, Hermit can trash estates, 
Paddock will eventually be good draw. Um, Menagerie's not bad. Quartier's potentially good payload. You would have to reveal Marauder or Amulet with it, but revealing Marauder would be nice because it's a three-type card. Um, the tricky question here is, do you bother trying to play towards Inheritance? Because if you want to like spike Inheritance or something, you would have a vastly different opening, I think, than if you didn't. So if you like ignored Inheritance for a second, Hermit Amulet or Double Hermit or Double Amulet, some combination of two of those cards would all be great openings. I mean, it's done really fast. Of course, the problem is like those cards are not ones that get you super likely to hit seven really early. Uh, I could see something like Hermit Silver or like Hermit Marauder. No, not Marauder is still too bad. Like Hermit Silver maybe with the idea of like trying to spike uh, seven on the the Madman turn. I don't know. Um, if I'm inheriting something, I'd probably inherit Menagerie, um, just because. It's like the most neutral card. If, if there's like a, a, a card here costing four or less that I would be willing to have just like a bajillion of my deck, it would be Menagerie. You know, Marauder, Amulet, Workshop, Hermit are all terminal. Um, and Shantytown is a village, but it's basically like an Acropolis and you have a bunch of them. And so all of those cards would like kind of suck to have a bunch of. Whereas Menagerie, I mean, I'd be happy to have as many as I can. And then... Um, Oh, I see what you're saying. I, I thought you meant <laughs> you inherit the Marauder. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I could see a world where, like, the spoils could potentially hit you. <laughs> um, could potentially help you hit seven. Yeah. Um, like, on 5-2, on I think I would just take the paddock and try to hit seven with that. Um, you could inherit ruins. Like, you could inherit ruined library. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. I'm not sure why you'd ever do that, but that would be a legal move. Anyways, let's look what they've actually done. So, Themen gets a Paddock on 5-2. That seems best to me. I could see an argument for Quartier, maybe, because it can it's like worth 3 instead of 2, so maybe like it's slightly more likely to hit hit 7. But like Paddock's just a much better card for your deck. Um, on 4-3, Blue Jay gets Shanty Silver. That's... Would I buy Ruin Market? No. Um... Like the only reason I would consider that is if there's just like absolutely no other way to gain things in the kingdom. But here, uh, Workshop and Hermit can gain you stuff, and then eventually Quartier will be a fine source of plus buy. I would not take Marauder here, I don't think. Um, again, like I, I could see like a potential rationale of like maybe opening with it with the idea of maybe that spoils can help you hit seven. But I think if I was trying to spike seven, Hermit into Madman would probably be the fastest way to do that. Um, the problem with Marauder is just, like, the trashing is really good here. Like, those those ruins shouldn't really hurt that much. The Hermit can trash them, the Amulet can trash them. I don't think Marauder is just... It's a kind of a waste of space. Yeah, um... Chad is pointing out that they have <laughs> taken neither the Amulet nor the Hermit. The two cards that I was saying, yeah, just open with some combination of these and you're golden. They're like, no, we're going to open with a combination of neither of these things. Which, I mean, in Themen's defense, they did have 5-2. So Paddock was, like, the right opening for them. But then they proceeded to just, like, continually not get Hermit and continually not get Amulet. Um, yeah, Marauder could eventually be good, like, in the very late game. If you, like, pick it up as a courtier target. Um, because it's, like, a three-type. Which means you could get, like, buy coins gold or something like that. Or non-terminally get, like, coins and buy. Um, in the short term, amulet will be, will be sufficient, but you might pick up a marauder once you're like drawing your deck. <laughs> so Themen might have a chance of hitting seven here with a good draw off those horses. What are we waiting for? I'm unsure why they're deliberating right now. Surely the correct next move is just to play the horse, right? What am I missing? Shantytown count counters Shantytown enough on its own, even without the ruins. Wait, what just happened here? Why did they not play the horse? 
I don't understand. That play made no sense to me. I, I have no idea what they were thinking. Like, that was like a really nice hand to have a good shot at hitting seven. You just play the horses, hope to draw at least like three coppers and four cards. Not uh, far from guarantee, but like a pretty good roll. Uh, and oh no, oh no, profit! No! Oh no, no, no! Oh god, they hit seven. They hit, well, they hit eight in fact, and then they said, you know, it would be great for my deck. Another junk card. <laughs> Oh, oh no! Why would you ever buy a province? Blue Jays, no. <laughs> mm. I'm gonna have to CC Blue Jays on a very strongly worded email about the the value of not greeting too early. Yeah, like if you inherit a state, or not inherit a state. If you inherit menagerie, then you'll get like eight points on on your own just by like taking the, the eight estates for free, and your deck will be better for it. Rather than adding province, which is less than eight points, and also a junk card, and also not menagerie, and also doesn't get your states out of the way. Uh, uh, yeah, like the the province really ought to be like a game losing play on its own. Okay, here we go. CC Blue Jays has exactly seven, so that they can't accidentally buy province. Will they make the correct play simply by by force? You have seven. There's a thing that costs seven. No, 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 not a gold. No. Oh no, no, not gold. I... Don't buy golds. I'm so sad. Well, if they're willing to buy gold on seven, I have a, a very unfortunate suspicion of what they're gonna buy on six here in this next hand. Hey. Yeah, the the three four opening I think is confusing. I I think like maybe a hermit amulet could still be the best way of hitting seven. Like madman plus a duration amulet together could be a likely spot of hitting seven. And then if you like fail, at least you got two good cards in your deck anyway. Um, yeah, I think amulet hermit, but with kind of a slightly different goal than normal. Like normally you're opening amulet hermit to just trash really fast. Here I actually think Amulet Hermit might be the best way to spike 7. Where you just, you let your Hermit turn into a Madman, and you pop the Madman, and you hit 7 that way. Um, I'd probably trash in a state if I could, anyway, with Hermit. Um, because it'll make hitting 7 more likely. You can regain the states later. <laughs> Has anything been inherited by... Nope, neither, neither of them is inherited. And three provinces have been bought. <laughs> I, I know for a fact that seven has been hit at least four times this game. Okay, here we go. Beeman, it's not too late. It's not too late. <laughs> buy inheritance, please. Play Paddock, Toil Marauder, buy inheritance. Again, there's a chance they might stumble into it. They'll be like, oh, I have nine. Hmm, I could buy province for nine, but I do want to Toil this Marauder. And if I told Marauder, would you look at that? I have seven. You know what costs seven? Inheritance. I just, surely one of them will just like stumble. Why did you not? Okay, this order is still fine. You can still do it. Toil the paddock and then buy inheritance. Okay. No! <laughs> no! Oh, no. Um, <laughs> all these. Eight golds have been bought so far. <laughs> So set aside the whole inheritance thing. Like, pretend inheritance didn't exist. And just ig ignore that entirely. There's a card in this kingdom that gains you free golds, as many as you could possibly want. <laughs> Why would you ever buy any golds when you... <laughs> yeah, Cave of Sapiens beat me to it. <laughs> Why would you buy golds one by one when you could just buy Courtier once, or twice, or thrice, and just... Like, litter your deck with gold. If, if that was, like, if you really just wanted a deck full of golds, there's a much better way to do that than to buy the golds. Oh, yeah. Ay, 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 ay. Hey, Menagerie. Now, imagine if your deck was, just, like, full of little Menageries that were estates, and how much more likely you would be to hit. I'm not sure who's in the lead here. Blue just has more points. But it kind of seems like Demon has a better deck. Demon also has more points. So, takeaways from this game is 
Inheritance can make for an interesting little gamble in the opening, which is, instead of getting thin directly with, like, Hermit or Amulet to trash your stuff, you could try to get a high roll and hit seven, and then turn all your states into valuable cards. Which is basically like trashing, because now there's three estates which were junk cards, and now good cards. Uh, and so that can be a gamble. And so the two options here, I think, are open with something that hits seven, open with something that can trash. But ultimately the goal of both of those is basically to get your deck clean one way or another. The inheritance strategy is basically trying to get this estate sort of functional out of your deck. They just never got their decks clean. They've not really trashed anything. Oh, let me rephrase. They've literally not trashed anything. Not a single card's been trashed this entire game, despite having two phenomenal trashes. Um, and so now these decks are just kind of like crapshoots. And so you have very little control over it, and then you just kind of play in roulette here at the end to see who can hit eight more consistently, which it looks like it'll be human. <laughs> so yeah, trash your cards. Alright, I believe that's two over Themen. And if Themen wins one more, they will be guaranteed to promote, I think. If I, if I have my, my numbers correct, I'm pretty sure if Themen wins any of the following four games, they will be the one to promote. And CC Blue Jays, if they win all four, will promote. In fact, I think that if CC Blue Jays doesn't win enough, I think that if they don't win at least two and a half, they might demote. Uh, this is League. I don't recall what division off the top of my head. All right, let's look at this kingdom. What do we got going on here? So draw is just mastermind. Um, action, also just mastermind. Well, I'm, I'm really wanting mastermind already. Um, we got trash and the forager, plus buy with grand market and capital and sacred grove, gain to the inventor. I would think the best deck here is to get really thin and then try to set up like a Mastermind Inventor Mega Turn. And like you could trash with Forager and then Inventor can gain you a bunch of stuff. That deck will probably end up having a bunch of Grand Markets in it as well. So you'll have plenty of plus buys and then you could just like empty all the provinces in one go. Uh, I think is likely how this should play out. Uh, to that end, I think I would open... Hmm. Double Forager is an option. Forager Dungeon is an option. Forager... And I don't want Forager and Inventor. I don't, I don't want to get that many threes and fours that badly. I think the Inventor can wait. I think Forager Patron could be a third option. Patron's more likely to spike five. Um, I'm not as sold on Forager and Inventor. Like, what are you gaining off the Inventor? I don't want a m bunch of threes and fours all that early. Uh, I, think, I think my main choices would be Double Forager or Dungeon Forager with the idea of trash a bunch really fast. Both of those guarantee I play my Forger more frequently. And then at some point I'll add like a Mastermind, and then around that time I want to start adding Inventors. Like the cards I really want are the fives and the sixes, and adding Inventor might actually hurt with that. I don't, like, I don't hate the Inventor or anything. Like you can pick up like two dungeons, you can pick up a few Caravan guards. It's not like hurting your deck or anything. Um, but I feel like getting Fan here is important, just because the draw is Mastermind, which is like incredibly weak draw. <laughs> Uh, like, one Mastermind will draw you one card every two turns on average. So you need a really thin deck to, to get things kicked off. You want a deck that's just got, like, three or four Inventors, a few Masterminds, and a bunch of, like, Grand Markets. Um, plus, like, Mastermind and Caravan Guard is, like, double sad because it'll stay out of play. Yeah, they, uh, consistent with their, their strategy in the previous game, and the game before that, are just not going to trash cards. Trashing is great. <laughs> trashing is wonderful. Uh, trashing your cards is like the best thing you can do in the opening like 90% of the time. <laughs> do I buy Grove? I would think not. Mastermind just seems too important to me. Uh, I just want a bunch of Masterminds and then uh, Adventures, Masterminds, Great Markets. Like some combination of those cards. And you want Forager so as to not have coppers and estates. I don't think I would touch Grove. And I don't think I would touch Capital. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's happening. It's happening again. <laughs> oh, no. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, they, they like gold. I don't like gold. 
We seem to have a difference of opinions here. It needs a lot more trashing. It needs a whole lot more trashing. Something tells me that Forager Pile might stay at 10 all game, and I'll be very disappointed by that. Maybe they'll get Flames Gift. Maybe, maybe they'll accidentally have a trasher in the form of this Sacred Grove, and they'll trash a card. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I would just, like, turn down a free gold. Like, if there was a boon that was just, like, have a gold if you'd like. I would, I would, I would not take a gold here. The, the draw is too limited, and uh, the gold is just not doing enough. So as Themen, I would think you mastermind the Sacred Grove. You're going to have oodles of money, and the, the Grove will give you more total plus buys. Kimmy, what are you asking? Forger can trash. If you're, if you're asking, like, are there no trashers? Oh, I see, I see. Yes, Grove trashes 1 in 12 times. Please don't discard, please don't discard, please don't discard. Don't do it. <laughs> please don't do it. No. <laughs> they're thinking about it. <laughs> I know they're thinking about it. <laughs> please don't. No. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Um, I don't think masterminding patrons is necessarily a bad idea or anything. Mountains Hex. Uh, boons are the worst. <laughs> Mainly for this reason. It's because it gives you <laughs> um, treasure cards that you don't want. The thing that annoys me about, like, Flame's Gift is, like, even, like, theoretically, like, suppose I could play my, like, Sacred Grove, like, like, hundreds of times, my deck wouldn't actually get thinner, because for every Flames Gift I got, I would get a Mountain's Hex off of it, and so I would end up with, like, a bunch of gold cards. Uh, I, w I would like Boons so much more if Mountain's Hex were optional. Uh, likewise, Wind's Hex hurts a lot as well. Um, and occasionally Sun's Hex can hurt. <laughs> They, wait a second. Why did only one of them trash a card? Why did Blue Jays not trash the copper? So Blue Jays was even given the opportunity to, to, to trash for free and declined. Oh, wait, no, I got it backwards. Uh, oh, I see. Themen was the one who declined to trash. Um, Blue Jays did, in fact, trash. I misread the log. Um, yeah, fair enough. So, we have now had, I believe, one total starting card trashed across two players <laughs> across three games. So they're batting one for 60. <laughs> well, you <laughs> you play the copper so you can <laughs> buy the gold. I don't, I don't like saying those words. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, green market is just clearly much better than gold is. It's two coins, but it's also not taking up a spot in your deck. So it's like, imagine you had like a grand market and then a gold. And you play the grand market and you drew the gold. That'd be like five coins instead of three coins. <laughs> grand market's a nice card. It's not like, like a game-defining card or anything in this kingdom or I think in general. But it's like almost always a card you like kind of want to get. Hmm. <laughs> And Themen does not want to get Grand Market. They could have not played this copper and then bought two of them. Here they could, I mean, this is this could still be fine. They could buy, like, Double Mastermind Inventor or something like that. At this point in the deck, I think it's actually probably better to just buy two Grand Markets than to do the Mastermind Inventor thing. Because, like, they haven't trashed their cards at all. The Mastermind Inventor deck really requires lining those cards up effectively, which they are now not in a position to do because they filled the deck with junk. Uh, so given that you have a deck that's already mostly junk, I would rather add money cards like Grand Market, I think. Or we could just add more junk cards. That's fine too. Alliance Palace is actually a pretty funny interaction. 
Uh, because the, the, the gold silver cover actually makes alliance worth like 13 points instead of 10. That's kind of cute. I mean, I still hate it, but it's cute. <laughs> Ooh, a wisp. That's another one that should be optional. Every once in a while, like with Wolf Den, you don't want Will O Wisp. Like, most of the time, Swamp Skip is an amazing boon. But there's no good reason it should be mandatory. Discard the coppers. And draw two more. Yeah, all the boons should be optional. It just seems like a very clear improvement. <laughs> so Thiemann's got a, a pretty big lead here. Where did this go awry? Let me see if we can figure that out. They have the same opening. They have the same... Okay, so Thiemann does hit five twice on turn three and turn four, whereas Blue Jays buy the gold and another gold. Okay, I think I'm answering my own question. Yeah, Mastermind is a good card. Mastermind's a real good card. Hate Mastermind like it's weak, or is Hate Mastermind like fun wise you don't enjoy playing with it? I would imagine playing with it in person might be a bit more annoying. Yeah, Thiemann actually has had some pretty fortunate Mastermind luck. Like, part of the value of trashing all your junk cards is that your Mastermind is guaranteed to hit. And, uh... They have not trashed any of the cards, and they've added hella junk cards, those alliances. And so, it is far from certain that their Mastermind finds a good target. Dungeons would be really good in these decks. KC is King's Court. It's like Mastermind, but not a duration. It's the one that's like, play cards three times. Like, Throne Room, now with 50% extra, awesome. Yeah, given how many victory cards are now in their decks, Dungeon would be a nice card to add. I'm not sure if there's like a good place to add it, but like, if I had a Dungeon, I'd be happy. Demon once again lines up their Mastermind of Sacred Grove. I would think you discard just the province. Yeah. Blue Jays should not discard the copper, I don't think. No, you could have drawn that with your Will-O-Wisp. If you set the copper a second and play the Will-O-Wisp, you'd have drawn the copper, which is just like free one extra coin. Whereas now the Will-O-Wisp is just going to draw a single thing. That was a bit of a mistake. And now they don't get to play their Inventor. This is looking like a win for Themen. <laughs> I I don't it, it's not true that they technically can't win. Like if, if Themen were to just like pass the next fifty turns, Blue Jays could acquire like all of the gold, silvers, and coppers for an extra what's that, fifty one points? It is not literally impossible. It is like impossible providing Themen continues to play the game. <laughs> so this is looking like three games and three wins for Themen. 
they now promote. Congratulations to Demon. I think they still need to play out the last three to decide whether where Blue Jays stands, because I think Blue Jays is at risk of demotion if they don't win enough. Not 100% sure on that portion, but I, I think that if Demon continues to win, Blue Jays might demote. Alrighty, game four, what do we got here? <laughs> Looks like goons make a turn. So we got trashing with research or um, better research with apprentice. You can also trash with rat catcher. You got draw with diplomat, research, apprentice, crypt. Action is walled village or diplomat. Plus buy is goons or technically contraband or traveling fair. Plus it actually is also technically like plus action plus draw if it hits. And we got an attack with Sea Hag. Sea Hag doesn't seem super important to me. Uh, I would think that the open here is probably Research Rat Catcher or Research Silver. Either of those two. I think I want to get a Goons pretty early. The attack seems like it'll be pretty annoying. And then. Uh, Okay, there's, there's so many ways to trash here, though. Like, one of them's surely going to buy, like, a Research or an Apprentice or a Rat Catcher at some point. I have faith. This is the game they're going to start trashing cards. Yeah, on 4-3, you could do Top Deck Rat Catcher. That's not a bad idea. Um, Now the downside with top decking rat catcher is that like it doesn't really do the thing that like top decking other nice cards does like top decking like peasant or page or something which is that like it's not getting the card back into your shuffle like you're not trashing turn two and getting rat catcher back in turn three it's basically like kind of guaranteeing your rat catcher like got top decked turn three because it's still missing that shuffle um and so it's not like obvious to me that it's like a better play than research but i think it's at least competitive <laughs> okay, Demon has bought a trasher. We're gonna see a card get trashed. And uh, Blue Jays has bought a village. So, I mentioned this in game one because they both did it. But don't, don't buy villages in the opening. Uh, villages are good when you have multiple terminal action cards to play. For example, multiple goons, or like a goons and a sea hag. You would want a village, rough about the time, that you have multiple terminal action cards in your deck, which you cannot conceivably have this early in the game. So there's no reason to be adding a village when that village is doing literally nothing for you. Like this wall village, look, it, it did nothing, nothing whatsoever. Um, they had the same like five card hand they would have had without the wall village there. And so it's just like a wasted buy. No, if it was the man, you would capitalize the T and then put a space. It's clearly Themen. I'm not sure what y'all are talking about. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Alright, so Themen has successfully trashed a card. I think this is the first card Themen has trashed in four games. Oh, Proteus is suggesting maybe it's Themen. That's possible. Uh, I could not rule out Themen. Okay, so five, I would think this is just a clear apprentice. They bought a merchant. And they didn't even top deck it. Like, with five, you could have bought Traveling Fair and then bought Merchant and put it on top for your silver that was coming up. They just bought the merchant. Why do they want a merchant? I don't understand that play. Okay, so here's another mistake from uh, CC Blue Jays. They play their contraband last. <laughs> so Themen now knows exactly how much money CC Blue Jays has and can ask, oh look, they've got eight. What would I buy with eight? If you play the contraband first, then your opponent doesn't necessarily know how much money you've got in your hand. They're like, oh, maybe they have only three-ish to die merchant. And you're like, gotcha, I had eight all along. Let me buy goons or something. Um, so CC Blue Jays bought two sea hags, which is... Definitely wrong. <laughs> I, I think you want zero sea hags here. The trashing is just good enough. 
that it uh, it should not matter. Yes, uh, <laughs> and the, the optimal way to play contraband is to just leave it in the pile. Uh, contraband is a very bad card. <laughs> Maybe the sea hag's like a blessing in disguise. Maybe like the existence of sea hag is gonna provoke them into getting the cards that trash things, and then they'll just by necessity have to use those cards on something, and then they'll end up trashing into the coppers and estates as well. I have actually gotten contraband twice recently, and both times it was because an inheritance was on the board, and adding a basically a gold for five was a decent way to spike inheritance, um, and that's like the only times in recent memory I can recall ever getting contraband. Oh, the one other context is like mass contrabands with triumph can be good. Like you add in a bunch of contrabands like on the penultimate turn to be able to afford triumph because it's a gold and a plus buy, so it helps you buy triumph. Um, and they can't deny you from buying that. That's like the other context. <laughs> so Cave of Sapien is asking, did they pass up a free rat catcher? And the answer is... You're forgetting that rat catcher trashes cards, and we don't we don't trash cards in this in this game. Uh, trashing cards is for people who don't cherish their possessions. Um, CC Blue Jays and Themen use every part of their decks; they don't let any go to waste. Remember, there's starving children out there who love to have three estates and seven coppers. <laughs> On six, I assume this is goons. Um, again, Apprentice or Top Deck of Research could also be fine, or Top Deck of Diplomat even, something like that. Uh, so given that we're probably never going to see the place where this deck should have gone, uh, I can, I'll discuss for a second what the, these decks really ought to look like. So Research, Apprentice, and Rat Catcher can get rid of all the starting cards. So you should have like no coffers and no estates. And if they pass you curses, you can get rid of those too. And then you've got Draw with Diplomat. Uh, you got Draw with Apprentice, you got Villages, uh, Walled Village, and Diplomat. Some combination of those will allow you to play a bunch of goons. And then you can just buy tons of cards. With like five goons in play and six buys, then you're scoring like 30 points per turn. Uh, so the goal is to just play goons and stuff all the time. I imagine probably the best draw here is just like a, a, just a boatload of Diplomats. Because if they hit you with goons, then your Diplomat's guaranteed to work. Uh, at least the first attempt you play it. Uh, the only argument against that is potentially like Diplomat plus Apprentice don't play well together. Apprentice will make your hand really big and the Diplomat will fail to activate. Um, but I think if I was forced to choose between the two, Diplomat seems like the better one. And so it also means you can't play with a Crypt, which I mean, I don't think you want to play with Crypt here, but like theoretically, that would be a disadvantage. Yeah, Rat Catcher is another way to activate Diplomat. Like, even if they don't choose Goons, you could, like, call Rat Catcher to trash a card. Um, if I had five early, I'd pick up an Apprentice. <laughs> yeah, like, Research is, like, Discount Apprentice. If I don't hit five early, I'm not, like... Losing any sleep over not getting an apprentice. You could live with just research and rat catcher. Uh, but if given the choice between research and apprentice, I wouldn't buy research over apprentice. The sea eggs have given out a lot of curses, which would make me think that Themen would want to buy some trashers, like say some rat catchers here, two rat catchers, get rid of those curses. Blue Jay is still playing Contraband last. A little unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, they're not even taking free rat catchers. It's, it's somewhat sad. Um, but they are taking golds. This is yet another kingdom where I would not buy a gold. Ha wait, have we actually seen any kingdoms yet where buying gold would make sense? I'm pretty sure none of them. I want to say none of the kingdoms we've had so far would ever make any sense to buy gold. Um, I mean, kingdoms like that do exist. Occasionally you will buy gold. Even I buy gold myself on, on the rare occasion. But it just, it tends to be such an overrated card. 
<laughs> yeah, in this case, buying rat catcher is, is even just like buying points because you have goons in play. All right. At this point, those cards, your estates and your coppers, they're like antiques. You know, they, they've been in your deck long enough, you've been through thick and thin with them. It would just be, it'd be rude to trash them at this point. Yeah, uh, to be fair, number three there in Johnson's list ends up being pretty close to number two. <laughs> you really shouldn't have a crypt here in the first place, though, because it plays poorly with the diplomats that you should have but don't. <laughs> so I guess g given the state of their decks, <laughs> the crypt is actually not the... Now, now the crypt is still pretty bad because they both have a bunch of goons, and so you're going to struggle to line up a big crypt turn here, I think, with, like, they, they haven't touched the draw cards. Diplomat and Apprentice are still at 10. So I'm not sure how they plan to line up a big crypt turn. Like, the ideal scenario for crypt is when either, A, you can just draw, like, your whole deck once, with, like, Sinister Plot or Madman or something, and get off, like, one big crypt turn and stash all your coppers away. Or B, there's just no other way to trash coppers and it's the best you've got. Or ideally a combination of those two things. And neither of those is particularly true here. I mean, you could, like, apprentice a high-value card. Like, you could apprentice a, uh, another apprentice or a, a gold. Or, I don't know why you have a gold, but, like, theoretically you could use apprentice to have, like, one or two big turns that's out all the coppers at once. And then you're, like, kind of trashed for a while. But I just don't want Crypt in the first place. I'd rather just trash the cards. Plus, Crypt... Uh, makes Diplomat hard to activate. Now, the way Diplomat works is it uh, gives you two actions if you have fire for fewer cards after drawing, which in like 99% of context, barring Relic or something, basically means you have to have four or fewer cards in hand when you play the Diplomat. So if you have five cards starting hand, oh my goodness, they did it. They, they're they learning. Are they listening in? Are they just, they, have they defined the correct play all of a sudden? All right, they're 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 improving. This is this is progress. I like that. Good on you, CC Blue Jays. Um, anyways, the other thing with diplomat, um, you know, if you have a five card starting hand, diplomat doesn't work. And so the the way to get diplomat to work is you need to like be able to reduce your hand size by at least one to get down to a four card hand, and then diplomat gives you those plus two actions and isn't just a terminal card. So like rat catcher would be a good way to do that here, for example. Trash your card at the start, then play diplomat. Wait, are they just doing it inconsistently? This is actually making the, the thesis of the learning look a little bit less solid. Maybe they they are just choosing between the two at random. Yeah, when your main payload is not treasures like goons here, then having a draw to X lot city is pretty good. You know what doesn't help a lot in a, a goons game? Province. Ay, ay, ay. So, you got a kingdom with goons, and you got a kingdom with an engine. Uh, you can score basically unlimited points. Goons can easily get into the hundreds. It is not uncommon to see like 100, 200, 300 points in a goons game. Uh, so there's just no reason to buy province. Province is A, not a goon. So that's eight bucks that could have gone towards your, your goons budget. And B, it's a jump card that's hurting your deck. Maybe the goal is to apprentice the province, or I guess research the province. Um, best goons combo. Uh, probably like all the cards are just good anyway. <laughs> like Recruiter is great with goons because Recruiter just does everything. It trashes and gives you actions and it, it makes, draws asterisk. Um, a goons Watchtower is pretty nice because you can buy extra coppers and then trash them immediately with Watchtower. So you can be scoring the whole game without having to worry about a hurting your deck. I see a, a problem a lot of people um, make with goons in the early phases is that like, oh, goons give me points. Let me use every buy every turn. And they like buy a bunch of coppers when they've got like one goons in play, and that destroys their deck before they ever get to have like a big mini goons turn. Watchtower actually makes that viable, because you can buy the coppers and then trash the coppers as they come in the watchtower. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's also a good point, is if you have a small hand size anyway, which you would in a Goons game, Watchtower draw is actually much better. Now, the, the downside of Watchtower, of course, is Watchtower and Goons are both terminal, and so you need a lot of villages to support that deck. Contraband last. Now, Theme is going, hmm, they have exactly eight. They should probably deny Goons anyway, honestly. <laughs> um, but at, in this game, I'm assuming we think provinces are good buys, and so they're going to deny province. Incidentally... <laughs> this was actually strategic. So playing contraband last forced uh, caused Thiemann to name province, which then caused Blue Jays to buy the correct card instead of the card they would have bought had they had the opportunity. Um, now they could have, they could have bought traveling fair first. Uh, but you buy traveling fair and then goons, you can top deck the goons and then play it the very next turn. <laughs> Yeah, and here, here we were dissing on Contraband, and in fact, it was uh, like four layers deeper than we were thinking. A Rat Catcher has been bought. Better turn 25 than never. Um, it is worth two points. In their defense, they don't have any rats in their deck, so why would they need rat catchers? Piles are getting pretty low. Goonies is at one, Curses at one, Wall Village is at two, Merchants at three. Uh, at this point, you probably do just want to start scoring points. Or buying silver. Yeah, I would definitely research the gold. Big, big turn. Let's see, is there a win? They have, actually, yeah, maybe they do have a win. Let's see, you can trash the curse, play two goons. You've got four, eight, 12, 14 money. You can buy goons, cursed village, not a cursed village, goons, curse, um, four, eight, I think it's, that's enough, right? That's enough. Are they going to see it? Yeah. Goons, walled village, walled village, curse. They've already bought traveling fear. Is it, can I miss not, no, that, that's enough. Goons, walled village, walled village, curse. Yeah, that's exactly enough. Um, they bought traveling fears. They bought a goons. Okay, I think they see it. No, 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 why, don't buy that, no, <laughs> oh, they don't see it, hmm. they're going to win anyway, uh, I don't think that CC Blue Jays deck is enough to do like 15 points right here, <laughs> yeah, they, they've, they've, they've just been intimidated into buying the rat catcher, uh, this is our fault. <laughs> That gold is what your deck needs right now, for sure. That gold that you are almost certainly never going to see because you are not going to draw back around to it. Like, CC Blue Days should just be in, like, desperate point scramble mode. Like, oh, look, the piles are basically empty. I should score as many points as I can as fast as I can. Buy the curse! Buy the curse! Buy the curse! Please buy the curse! No! <laughs> oh, you have one buy. There's two piles empty. There's a card that's at one. <laughs> they probably just don't notice that the curse pile is so low. They're probably aiming for the walled village merchant goons pile out. <laughs> that would be hilarious if CC Blue Jays is the one in the game. I think Theeman will notice that they should buy walled village here. If for no other reason, they've just been buying tons of walled villages this entire game. All right, 4-0 for Themen. Possession! <laughs> All right, neither of them has a ban list. We can see any card here. Oh no, oh lord. I, I don't even know how to comment possession. I, I have not played with this card in so long. 
And I think you have to here. This is this is definitely a possession kingdom. Oh my. Oh me, oh my. Man, I don't know anything about possession. Honestly, it's just like like I have I have like vague distant memories of these horrific experiences where possession was in kingdoms and it's like kind of blocked those out of my head. Uh so, so let me see if I got this right. If, yeah, same, I have a band. If you play Possession and your opponent has a Sanctuary in their deck, you can just cause them to exile their whole deck, right? <laughs> oh, this is going to be brutal. And you're like, you have to put Sanctuary in your deck too, because you have to trash. And when I say you have to trash, I'm saying, uh... <laughs> one ought to trash. I'm not. I, I, I'm not so sure these these two are actually going to trash. The last games have given me a little hope of that. Um, but let's let's talk about what's going on here. So possession is very strong. Uh, the problem is you basically play like an entire turn of your opponent's deck. So like one possession equals like one whole turn. It's like super busted. It's like an outpost. If you could play as many of them as you wanted to. So you got to build a deck that can play a bunch of possessions. And the problem is that means you have to make your deck really good, which then means when they possess your deck with their possessions, they get a lot of good stuff out of it. And so it's kind of like a race to who hits possession first, and then like it just snowballs from there. Um, the best counter to possession often is just like if the kingdom's like mediocre, you can try to green early. And the idea is like you get a short term points lead, and then they get their possession online right about the time that you have like three or four provinces, and like your deck's kind of gone to shit anyway. But that's kind of a, a, a virtue of it, because if your deck's already kind of shitty, then they <laughs> then possessioning it doesn't really get them much. And so you just try to like get a majority of provinces before they possess you. That's not really viable here. This deck's just got incredibly strong engines. So you can definitely build big. So the question is, how do you build to an engine that can play possession as fast as possible, as quick as possible? I would think the opening here should be Militia Silver, with the idea to get sanctuaries quickly and get stuff exiled. Um... And then you get a thin deck, you can add in like maybe a, a stables or two for draw. You add potion relatively early and then get possession. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I would think Sanctuary first seems pretty clear to me. I really want to get rid of those estates. I think I would even take a second Sanctuary before the first stables. Militia March is something you could consider if you were, um... I, the one thing, if you thought your opponent opened Patrician turn one, you could do it. Because then you would know that they had the 2-5, and then turn that into a 2-3. Alternatively, if you were player two, you could go Militia March to try to destroy their possibility of, um, hitting five on their turn three. How do you know if it is day or night? Now, uh, look outside the window. Um, and then the, the general brightness will be a pretty good indicator most of the time. Um, to answer these questions non-satirically, the Exile map is a new element of Dominion added in the most recent expansion of Menagerie, which I take it uh, maybe CC Blue Days is not super familiar with yet, in which cards like Sanctuary, for example, can put a card onto the Exile mat, um, and it's kind of like, it's still yours, but it's not in your deck anymore. So like for points purposes, you could like exile your province to get it out of the way, but then it's still worth six points at the end of the game. And so it's like stuck there, out of sight, out of mind. And if you um, if you want that card back off your exile map, what you have to do is you have to buy or gain a new copy of the card that's in exile. And if you do that, you can take the old copies of that card off the map. So like, let's say I, I had exiled a bunch of coppers, and for whatever reason, I'm like, I want those coppers back in my deck now. I can buy a new copper, and then whenever I do that, I get the option to like take all the coppers back off my exile map and throw them back in my discard pile. Um, yeah, Thiemann's got the explanation mostly right. I do think that, like, you can get them back as a key detail some of the time, but but for sanctuary purposes, that's probably not super important to mention. Um, let's see. Yeah, so uh, they're also explaining the, the night cards. Uh, here, Werewolf is a night card, which means you can play it at the end of the turn. You, if you play it normally, it's like a smithy. And then if you wait until after your biphase and play it, it's like an attack card. Yeah, 
Yeah, it is kind of important, like, I'm, I believe, although I don't actually own Menagerie, that the, the physical game, the, the Exile mat, has text on it explaining how it works. But there's actually no way to view that text here. Yeah, it would be nice if it showed up in the Kingdom view. Anyway, that's kind of lost track of where we are at. Let's see what they've done. So, Blue Jays opens Malicious Silver. I like that. Uh, Themen opens Groom Silver. I, I'm not as much fan of that. I mean, Groom's a good card in most kingdoms, but, like, you don't want a bunch of Malicious. I mean, I mean you can gain some Patricia, but those are going to run out fast. Um, now, in spite of that, the biggest drawback of Groom is it makes you really unlikely to hit five, because Groom is itself not worth anything in the, the turn you play it. Uh, and so, despite all that, uh, Thema manages to hit 5 anyway, despite uh, Blue Jays having the opening that's much more likely to hit 5. So this is a really fortunate turn 3 for Thema. Uh, Blue Jays hits 4 and buys another silver. Uh, oh no, I didn't notice this yet. <sighs> oh no, oh no, oh no. Blue Jays bought a city. City is a village. Why do you need a village when you have one term election card in your deck? I don't know. It's just like a really expensive $5 village. Village is a $3 card. Um, and uh, City, for quite a good portion of this game, is just going to be a $3 village, which they spent $5 on. Because these things are not going to come into play until late in the game. There is a ton of good fives here. Sanctuary, Stables, even Werewolf is a good five. Uh, and they passed up on that to buy a card that does literally nothing for them for the foreseeable future. Uh, that is a, an egregious mistake, I think. Uh, like, game-losing mistake in a, in a good game. Then they bought gold. At this point, I'm just kind of numb to it. That gold also could have been a sanctuary, though. Could have even been a stables. Ay -ay 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 -ay. And they bought a fest. <laughs> I Blue Jay's goal seems to be, like, every time I hit five, let me buy, like, Every card that costs five, except for the correct one. City's bad, gold is bad, festival's bad. Um, we're not going to touch any of the good fives. I wouldn't be surprised if I touch you next. Um, and they've got Werewolf, which is, again, we're getting closer. Like, CC Blue is actually, like, they're, like, in inching slowly towards the right buys. Like, of those, City is the most useless. Gold is probably second most useless. Festival, third worst. Werewolf fourth worst, then stables and then sanctuary. Okay, they, they, they do have a sanctuary now. We're we're in good we're in good shape. A little late, very late, incredibly late, but we do have a sanctuary now. And now we're back to buying golds. <laughs> okay then. Maybe that was actually strategic. Maybe they're like, Thema just got a potion. They're going to be possessing me. I better make sure my deck isn't any good. <laughs> so that when they possess me, they don't get anything out of it. Um, I'm not really sure how to explain these buys otherwise. Aye. Another militia. You really only want one militia. You want to have one militia and draw your deck and play that one militia every turn. You can't, there's no value in like attacking them twice. I would think that like just a patrician is probably better than a militia there. <laughs> City Court is a really strong card, but I think it's actually not super amazing here just because it's gonna be hard to line up when you're getting militia attacked. Okay. Stables is also not amazing for the same reason. Um, some combination of those cards is going to be fine, though. Yeah, so I suppose, provided that you've already made the other mistake of not making your deck thin, adding a second militia can make sense. Like, in a kingdom without trashing, having two or three militias could, could be sensible, because you want to find a militia every turn, and you know that the one militia is only going to show up, like, every five or six turns. That being said, the correct way to resolve that in this game is not to add multiple militias, it's to add multiple sanctuaries and then draw cards and get your deck thin. Like, 
In general, you don't want to add payload cards until you've got your deck under control. And your deck is under control when you're drawing it. And so I would not touch gold, I would not touch potion, any of that stuff, until I was drawing my deck every turn. Step one would be to get some cards that help you thin your deck, so Sanctuary. And step two is to get some draw cards like Stables, or even City Quarter Werewolf, so that you draw around to the Sanctuaries more often. And once you've exiled most of your starting cards, then you can start considering, oh, I'll add in a potion, I'll add in a possession, and so forth. <laughs> yeah, I'll exile the Kroom now. That sounds good. Or we could get another estate. <laughs> Why do you want more estates in your deck? <laughs> that didn't really make sense to me. That Kroom is basically a junk card at this point. This is kind of the reason I didn't want Groom in the opening here, is, like, the Patricians are going to run out, and once Patricians out, there's just nothing else I want to gain with that Groom. It just gets in the way. Uh, we are not playing with Stables, it would seem. The reason for that, I don't know. Five potion feels bad. They really like the cities. I don't know why. Again, they're just villages. There's like really expensive villages. Yeah, owl would have been a good play. So Themen is exiled two coppers. Blue Jays exiled one estate. That is so few. That is so incredibly few cards. Gains a sanctuary. Wait, Themen got their sanctuary turn three. Why do they only have two cards in their exile match? Plays the sanct. They've played it five times. And they only exiled twice. Uh, yes, hover over their names to see which one the exile map. If you wanted to stay there more permanently, you can also click on their names, which will cause it to uh, remain in view even when um, you've moved your mouse. I actually didn't know that latter one for quite a while. I was playing a game versus Steph, um, where there's just like a bunch of stuff on various maps, like, like native village mat and archive or whatever, I forget exactly what. But there's like so many that you couldn't view at all, there's like a scroll bar. And I was just like, how do I scroll? I'm hovering over it, and then when I try to move my mouse over to the scroll bar, it disappears again. And I was unaware that you can click on their names to cause it to stay there, and then you can like move your mouse over and scroll down. Fortunately at the time, I happened to be playing the guy who made the site, and so I was just like, help me please, and then Steph explained how to do it. Yeah, I think the site's pretty well designed, uh, all things considered. I guess it helps that you you have someone who is like a very competitive player themselves, because um, they, they kind of naturally know what you know good site design is going to look like. I haven't played Catan online, but I've definitely played various variations of like Mafia or. Avalon and other board games and stuff that have like very poorly designed sites for them. I actually, my first ever game of Dominion was on Tabletop Simulator, which I think no longer even has Dominion. I want to say it got like scrubbed from the site because, um, I don't know, I guess like copyright or something. Um, but there you had to like manually do everything, like manually pick up each card, move it to end play, keep track of everything yourself. That was quite a tedious game. Because when you're doing it over, it's like playing in person, but with like a, like a clunky online interface. 
um, in lieu of like actually able to physically hold the cards. Let's see how exile is coming. CC Blue Jays is still at one card exile, but wait, no, they 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 could have made it two here. They could have exiled the copper. You weren't even gonna buy a four cost card. Why did you keep the copper around? I don't understand. They bought a three dollar card anyway. You didn't need the copper. Um, yeah. So way of the owl is gonna be like a nice counter to these militia attacks because you have a three card hand. You can draw back up to a six card hand. It's like you play a village or something. You know, Lord knows they have plenty of villages. And then you play another card as owl, and then you have a six card, six card hand. It's functionally like plus three draw, like three labs. Demon's getting there incredibly slowly because they're barely exiling. Uh, the problem is they've got so many of these uh, coppers and estates left. Oh no, don't add more silver! <laughs> Cave was just commenting you on your respectable debt. <laughs> Demon was just like, nope, I'm not having it. <laughs> respectable is not in my name. Um, I'm going to destroy my deck by adding more treasures. Like, why would you even want silvers in a deck with city quarters in it? It just gets in the way. <laughs> I'm not really sure what deck they're trying to build here. This would be a good turn to Owl. Discard down, discard both silvers, play a city, play Patrician as Owl. Um. I am so, so confused by that choice. <laughs> Why? Why did they do that? Why do they want just silvers? <laughs> to discard the bet. It's like a pillage attack. <laughs> like their best two cards got discarded. And they bought a gold. You know, on top of exiling things, Sanctuary is also the plus buy source here. Now, you see, what we have here is two Roman historians, and so they know to beware the Ides of March. They're not going anywhere near that event. Even if they have a possession in their discard pile and could play that possession for just three coins. Yeah, that's fair. Possession is sort of plus buy if you ever play it. So the, the problem with these decks is that they're just so gosh darn full of treasures that they can't do anything. Like Demon, for example, has one card that they should really want to play every turn, which is the possession. And they can't draw around to it because they've got all these treasures they keep drawing. You want a deck that's real thin, doesn't have too many treasures in it, has a bunch of like city quarters or something. So you draw to that possession every turn. Possession deck, please no more silvers. Please don't do it. <laughs> please. <laughs> Respect your deck. <laughs> Just thinking about it. I'm not even sure... I'm not even sure adding the state is worse than adding two silvers. But, like, it, you shouldn't. But, like, I'm not sure what you should do there. Just not play the groom. Yeah, there's really nothing worth gaining off of the groom at this point. Yeah, plus, like, the horse will be nice once. All right, two possessions have been bought.
by a stables or a sanctuary? Probably a sanctuary, I think. Okay, what are they? Wait, now they're marching when it's the opponent's turn? <laughs> What's the goal here? I don't understand. What card are they wanting to march? <laughs> yeah, they, they could play their opponent's sanctuary for them and be nice enough to set their, their sanctuary aside. That'd be hilarious. None of these look remotely appealing. I mean, you shouldn't march Groom because it's going to junk your deck. I, mean, I would just, I guess, march Patrician or something. Because you don't want to use Sanctuary and you don't want to use Groom. <laughs> they did it! They did it! <laughs> oh no, I don't, I don't think they realize what that does. <laughs> Or maybe they do, and they're just being friendly. So to be clear, Themen, while possessing CC Blue Jays, has set Blue Jays' province aside for them on Blue Jays' exile map. So basically, they're cleaning up Blue Jays' deck. Okay, so maybe, um, I wonder how they thought that was going to work. Maybe they thought that, like, exiling Blue Jays province was going to put it onto, like, Themen's mat or something. And yeah, I'm not totally sure how undoing works. I think if you, like, undo on a possession turn, it's, like, broken or something. Wouldn't know, I don't play with possession. I believe, in fact, that this debt thing was a edit made to possession that possession originally did not have that little debt clause in there and then it created the problem where <laughs> you just possess your opponent and keep buying debt cards and they can't get out of debt to do anything about it because they try to pay off the debt and then you possess them again and buy more debt cards and they're just stuck in a mountain of debt um and so i'm pretty sure this is before my time but i believe possession came before the concept of debt and so the little or debt clause had to be added after the fact um, to fix one of the like many ways possession is utterly broken. And then I think, you know, new things that break possession, like exile maps have rolled around and Donald X I think has just given up making possession salvageable and now just tells people don't play with, don't play with possession, it's a bad card. <laughs> yeah, so what Blue Jays I think was missing is like Themen played possession, which means Themen was playing with Blue Jays' deck. Um, and then whatever cards Blue Jays acquires while Themen is playing with Blue Jays' deck, um, go to Themen. So you like play your opponent's turn out, you buy a good card, and then you get the card. Um, that being, and it also has like a little protection against trashing, which is like if you try to trash your opponent's card for them or something, um, like oh I'm gonna be cheeky and like possess my opponent and then play a chapel and then trash all the cards and destroy their deck. Possession doesn't do that because the the card instead of getting truly trashed gets like set aside. But there is not a similar restriction in place for exile cards. So you could possess your opponent and exile the card, which is like functionally trashing, but not technically trashing. So the little possession portion that's like, if you trashed it, instead just set it aside, doesn't say if you exile it, just set it aside. And so you could possess your opponent, play Sanctuary, and exile their good cards. Like set aside their city, so it's stuck on the exile map. Uh, and then like exile all their good cards from the deck. And that would be uh, strategic, but <laughs> there's not a real good way around that. Now, what Themen did was, did all that, and then exiled a bad card, the province, which set, gets a bad card out of Blue Jays' deck, which is helpful for Blue Jays. I, now, the, the, the correct strategic move here is just to, to put possession on your ban list. 
In fact, there was a while, like, the ban list wasn't always around. The ban list was rolled out like a year or so ago, I think, a year and a half maybe. Um, prior to the, ex the existence of the ban list, it used to just be the case that possession was the one card that was just like banned for everybody. And if you played like the, the random match queue, you could just never get a game with possession. Um, because it's just such a, a clusterfuck. <laughs> Yeah, a hand of City Quarter and Silvers is honestly Themen's just dessert for what they've done to their deck. Like, they added all the Silvers. I'm not sure what they expected to happen, but it really makes their City Quarter hard to, to set off. I've honestly gotten so distracted by so much of this. I don't even... Why is Blue Jays in the lead? I feel like a while back it felt like Themen was, <laughs> was ahead. Maybe it's just all these random Groom plays where they keep adding, like, Silvers and Estates and stuff to the deck. Well, like, Blue Days never even got possession. <laughs> yeah, like, possession's really good in an engine kingdom. Which, I mean, this ought to be an engine kingdom, it's incredibly strong. But they're not playing it like an engine kingdom, they're playing it like money, where they're just adding a bunch of treasures. And possession does less good in those decks, because you see the possession every once in a blue moon. So, th the good news for the city is that there is a, a pile at one left. And so in that pile, the province pile goes to zero, the cities will all of a sudden be laboratories. And then they'll be really good. <laughs> but yes, it, it does look as though this game is going to end before these cities ever actually do anything at all. <laughs> they are never going to activate, let alone get the like double activation with two piles being empty. Because the first pile that's going to run is province. Okay, now Themen's deck is doing some things. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Please just get rid of that godforsaken groom. Exile it. <laughs> Exile it to the, the depths of hell. <laughs> or gain more states, that's fine too. <laughs> I would assume this has just got to be like triple duchy. You don't really have time to do anything else. Demon could still win here. So they've they've stolen Blue Jays' good turn. Now they buy Duchy. Yeah, um Proteus has a good point in chat, which is you didn't need the money from militia. <laughs> so playing the militia actually attacks your opponent's hand. Which is the hand that you were about to possess, which gives you a worse hand to play with on your possession turn. Um, so it was definitely better to just not play the militia. Seven, so close. I would just buy Duchy Estate here. Just run up the points. Yeah. Now is this half points? I think I think there's no way no this no, it's not half points. Themen could still technically win by getting all the Emporia. And they can do better than tie here. There is ten points sitting in the important pile. Yeah, uh, I feel like Th Themen has marched exactly once, I believe, and it was when they were possessing their opponent. I'm controlling the march, and it's showing up a ton, but that's just because chat keeps talking about it. Yeah, Blue Jays marched a sanctuary once. Oh no, that, that was Themen marching of oh, Blue Jays. Um, I don't 
Yeah, the theme men did march a possession um, before, so they know it's a, it's a possibility. I don't like the gold buy. Um, I mean, it's not doing anything for you, really. I would have just bought um, probably Emporium to lower that pile so there's fewer points on the table for my opponent to take. Yeah, this looks like a win. There's no possession of the trash, I don't think. Why? Alrighty, Blue Jays puts the points on the board. We're not gonna see a clean sweep. So I believe it is now 4-1 in Thiemann's favor going to the final game. I also lose track like every single time I try to <laughs> commentate a game. I believe that was game five. We're actually set to end this at a reasonable time. They're gonna finish before two hours, despite starting late. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh no. First possession, now Swindler. This is why ban lists exist. Ban these cards so you never have to see them in your kingdoms. Oh goodness, goodness, goodness. So, how do you open here? Double ambassador, fairy sentry. Um, I think I would open with sentry. I think I just want a fairy sentry by sentry. I think Double Ambassador is competitive, but I think I prefer the Sentry opening. And then you can't really build here because there's no draw. But you could like throw some tunnels into a deck that has a bunch of Sentries in it and activate them that way. And that might be a thing. Not sure that's a thing. That's probably not a thing. It's probably better to just have some Sentries, have like an Ambassador or two, or a Swindler, and then add like a Courtier or two for Golds. I think Courtier is probably the better way to get Golds. That's my new answer. Is like sentries, courtiers, swindlers, or relics. For you'll need like a two type card for courtier, and relic is a two type, ambassador is a two type, swindler is a two type. Um, oh, tunnel is as well. Um, although, if you're getting courtier, you're probably not getting tunnel. And so, like sentries, courtier, uh, attack cards, and then add in some bishops, and you can bishop the gold that you gain for points. Trashing gold with bishop is four points. So five here is just like very clearly Sentry. I would not even think about it. I just click that card reflexively. How did you buy Mint? Oh, I, you're saying like no Mint, like don't buy Mint. I thought you were like no comma Mint, like not Sentry Mint. Um, okay, I think Mint chooses Sentry, that is correct. How did Blue Jays open? Bishop Silver, that is really, really bad. So firstly, Bishop. Bishop is a card that you're gonna want here. But Bishop is not a trasher. Bishop is a like a, a, a source of victory points. The reason is because, supposing the kingdom is one where you value trashing, which is like almost every kingdom, it doesn't help you to use Bishop to trash because your opponent also gets to trash. So any of the values of trashing with Bishop accrue equally to both you and your opponent. So that value becomes moot. If anything, it's better for your opponent because they get to trash just like straight out of their starting hand without having to play a card and line it up first. Um, and so opening Bishop for the purpose of trashing is just a bad idea because you're helping your opponent. Like I, I would love to, I would love for my opponent to open Bishop because it means I get to trash early. Uh, you want Bishop for the like score points aspect later, uh, like when you can Bishop gold and stuff for points, then it will be good. But you have a phenomenal trasher here in the form of Ambassador. And another one in the form of Sentry. These are two like incredibly strong cards. 
And you actually could open Sentry on the 4-3 because of the fairy. You could spend turn one putting the token on Sentry, spend turn two buying it. That's how I would open. The other alternative is just buying two ambassadors and trashing that way. But they've gone with an opening that does neither of those things. And, I mean, I'm not surprised. They don't seem to value trashing at all for some reason. Um, they're, I think, clearly at sort of the level where they undervalue having a clean deck. Um, but this is an opening that is really bad because it doesn't help you trash cards. And if you know where trashing cards is very easy to do and very important to do. All right, oh, actually, let me look at the like, turn threes and turn fours. So Blue Jays buys Swindler. I mean, in the abstract, that's fine. Swindler is like a strong attack card. Um, that being said, they need to get some of the trashes that should have been an ambassador. Make up for lost time. Demon buys Mint. Do they have money left in their deck? Um, wait a second. So Vagrant, Sentry, Mint. How do they plan on um, paying for anything? Okay, so they, they do have three coppers left. So just, I guess silver, honestly, might be better than Swindler here. Be, or, okay. Um, I was gonna say silver might be best because you could mint it. Swindler, I mean, doesn't have an attack which matters as well. I'm not really sure how they plan to discard that tunnel. Like what are the odds that the tunnel is one of the bottom two cards and the sentry is one of the top five cards? Not high. Like I'm pretty sure that tunnel's just gonna be like mostly a junk card for a while unless they get really lucky. Maybe the idea is to buy the 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 silver so it gets swindled into a tunnel. I don't know. We'll buy the tunnel so it gets swindled into the silver. Honestly, I I. I detest uh, Swindler from the very depths of my soul. I think if I could only ban one card, I would actually be willing to play with Possession just to keep Swindler banned. Because it's just, it's such a crapshoot. <laughs> just like rolling dice to, to decide the winner. Um, like an early Swindler can be utterly innocuous, actively helpful, or incredibly devastating. And it's like, so there's not like an overpowered card or anything, but it's like reasonably strong enough that you get it most of the time. And so most games you have this like massive infusion of luck. I would think Blue Jays here could consider like play three coppers and just one silver and buy mint. You could also just buy Sentry. I'm guessing they'll do neither of those things because they don't seem to value trashing, um, but they should do one of those things. Fairy Courtier. Hmm. The problem I think for Blue Jay's deck right now, for adding Courtier like immediately, is they're gonna have trouble lining it up reliably. Like part of the value of having a thin deck is, for example, that you only need to have maybe like one or two targets for Courtier, like a Relic or a Swindler, to have a high likelihood of finding at least one of those in your hand with Courtier. Uh, with a deck as thick as theirs is, probably a majority of turns, if you just added a courtier now, they wouldn't line it up. Oh, you mean for Themen. Yeah, Themen could consider it. They've got Tunnel. Uh, for Themen, I could totally see Fairy and Courtier and then buying Courtier next turn. Yeah, that play sounds totally fine to me. Yeah, I think, like, my ideal deck here is not one that is, like, super full of money, like, tons of silver or anything like that. Like, I think you want a deck that stays relatively thin and plays courtiers and bishops. 
and then bishops a bunch of golds uh, is probably best. Um, part of the benefit of that is actually like bishop and gold are both kind of immune to swindler. If you swind swindle a gold, you'll get a gold back. And a bishop at worst gets turned into a throne room, which is still not a bad card. Court here would be a bad card to see hit with swindler though. CC Blue Jays just bought a silver for five. For six. Wait, what am I missing here? <laughs> they, they, they just bought a silver for six. Like, I'm not one to say buy gold. But if I was going to buy a silver anyway, why would you not just buy the card that's strictly better? I don't understand... Uh, what am I missing? Anyway, yeah, like, Relic would be an even better buy than gold. Um, my point is just like, if you can see the value in silver, surely you can see the value of gold. I would think that, um, realistically speaking, Relic would be a better buy, Quartier would be a better buy, Century would be a better buy. Um, there's definitely many better buys there. You give them an estate. What? Why are you... I don't understand. <laughs> so, maybe Blue Jays is thinking like, Estate is worth points, Vagrant's not worth points, I shouldn't score points for my opponent. But then you think for a second, like, you know, I do often buy Vagrants because they improve my deck. I don't buy Estates because they're bad for my deck. And then you would realize that uh, your opponent would much rather have the Vagrant in their deck than an extra Junk card. Uh, and then you give them the Estate. Yeah, giving your opponent Estates is very much a strong attack. One that often happens in Ambassador games. Well, I mean, this is an Ambassador game, and that is a thing that happened. Although, ironically, not because of Ambassador, but because of Sunlight. <laughs> you know, you're asking valid questions, P. Sly. Why did they take plus action off their core tier when they plan to play no other actions that turn? I don't know. Why did they not take a free gold, despite the fact that they literally bought a gold the same turn, which they could have gotten for free? I also don't know. Um, I have no explanation for you. <laughs> Two nice cards to see on the top. I think Themen really needs a bishop around this point. Um, preferably multiple, actually. Like, as Themen, I really want to start bishoping these, uh, treasures now. Discard the tunnel tracks of silver. Hmm. I'm definitely buying Bishop here. I think probably the best way to do this would be take plus buy and then fairy Bishop and then buy Bishop. That works, right? You have six money. Yeah, that would work. You could do plus buy, fairy Bishop, buy Bishop. Uh, I think is my ideal line. Swindling province into province. Uh, the, the point was just this was like I wanted a bishop there anyway and you have six and so if you took plus buy I mean like, I guess you could buy like vagrant plus bishop if you value the vagrants which maybe you do slightly um, but given that vagrant is going to be like a very little value in that deck um, at least reducing the cost of bishop so that it would be easier to get in future buys it's just like slightly better than buying it outright it's not like there's a super important reason it was just Buying a bishop and then not a whole lot of else, a whole lot else to do with the extra money you have. An alternative that I guess is also plausible would be like gain gold by bishop would be pretty reasonable for this deck. You could have done that. That's a fair point. Maybe actually, uh, 
how many swin- oh, they just they do just have the one swindler, so I guess it's not a big deal. But that is at least a potential counter argument for sure against um, burying the bishop. So this looks like a win for Blue Jays. Comeback time. Unfortunately, a little bit too little too late. Uh, I think maybe it was just like the pressure. Like once the pressure is off um, and Demon had already locked down the match, Blue Jays was like, all right, now I, I can relax and concentrate. Anyways, good games. The 4-2 final score for Demon, who will now promote to the H division. And I believe that, I want to say Blue Jays needed to score at least two to not demote, so they might be demoting. But I'm not 100% sure on that. You're welcome, Demon. See you all around.